Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining me today in the locker room. I'm Alan Locker. Ryan's Hope made its television debut on ABC on July 7th, 1975, and the daytime drama ran for 13 years and 3,515 episodes until January 13th, 1989. The show was created by Claire Labine and Paul Avila Meyer. The show revolved around the trials and tribulations within a large Irish American family in Washington Heights, in the Washington Heights neighborhood of New York City. Original cast members included Nancy Addison, um, Nancy Addison Altman, Bernard Barrow, Justin Dees, John Gabriel, Helen Gallagher, Malcolm Groom, Ron Hale, Eileen Kristen, and Kate Mulgrew, to name just a few. And of course, my next three guests spent a lot of time together causing trouble and creating a little heart, heartache along the way with their little love triangle. I'm thrilled that they're here to talk to me today. Please welcome to the locker room, Michael Corbett, who played Michael Pavel Jr., Kelly Maroney, who played Kimberly Harris, Bulak, and Louise Schaefer, Ray Woodard. Michael, Louise, and Kelly. Hi, hey. everybody. Hey. Join the party here. <laughs> Join the party. I, so I know cool. fans fans are very excited to see you three today. So well, cool. we're excited to see each other. Yeah. Oh my God. It's like that no time has passed. Yeah. I know. <laughs> That's weird. I love you guys. <laughs> so Louise said she hasn't seen you, Michael. I think in like 25 something. No. You, you look exactly the same. So <laughs> <laughs> Louise, we haven't seen we haven't seen each other. Well, none of us have seen each other yeah. in person mm -hmm. since 1983. You oh. and I, Michael, you and I went to the opening of the Television Academy together. Yes, oh and that God. was like in the nineties. That was yeah. fun because we well, were Louise, in we haven't seen you in person. It's like, oh my God, I love these two women. I love you guys. <laughs> Good to see you. We're having you more fun. I, I, Go ahead, Louise. Michael, you and I saw each other somewhere in the 90s on the Upper West Side for a cup of coffee. Oh, my God. How many years ago was That's that? That's last I've seen you. Yeah. Like like you randomly I bumped into each other? That's, That's good. Yeah, it was, a long, it was a long time ago. Many, wow. many, probably 10, more than 10 or 15 years. Yeah. She, yeah, she said sometime in the 90s. In the 90s. Oh, my God. Yeah, sometime in the... That's crazy. Do you remember meeting for the first time? Anybody? Do you remember? I do. I, okay, I have a really good story. So uh, Kelly and, and Louise were on the show. And I was brought in. My character was brought in as, you know, for this, just actually for a couple of days. Really? So I, I was brought in, and I would re I remember rehearsing in the morning. I would go in and rehearse, because back in the day, you would go down to the basement, and you would rehearse first, and then you'd go up and do the show into the studio. So this is my favorite story about Louise. So um, <laughs> we would rehearse, and everybody would be there. And then we'd go upstairs, and when I would do these scenes, this woman – this like literally, it was like uh, um, um, uh, Grace Kelly would walk in. This magnificently beautiful woman walks in, and she would do her work, and then she'd leave. And this went on for you know the, my first whole period when I was working. I finally went up to her, um, do it right before she was about to film the scene. And I said, I said, excuse me, you're Louise. How is it? How is it that you don't have to rehearse in the morning? And she said. <laughs> And the next morning, because Louise, when you would come in with those mag huge glasses, I did. You were it was this transformation <laughs> that I had no idea that it was Louise. <laughs> she would come in with I don't know all kinds of stuff all over and big giant glasses and big coats and things. Yeah. I had no idea it was you. She did that on purpose. She did it to me too. So I came in my first day rehearsing. And there's this lady, she's really nice, but she's kind of like a librarian and she's a little spacey and she's got a hole in her stocking. She's running around looking for her coffee. I thought, okay, you know, all day long. And then I didn't see her for a while. And then we got down to shoot the show and she opens, cause she's supposed to open the door and there I was. And she had this red 
uh, Halston on and her hair and, her, and she opened the door and I went, oh, because <laughs> I've never seen Ray before. And I think she gave me on purpose. I really do. <laughs> it, Kelly, is that your first day when she opened the door? My first day. But beforehand, she's just a, like this nice lady, like with glasses and a librarian and, you know, this like totally unassuming person. And then, whoonk. And I, I, I swear you did it to me on purpose. I swear. <laughs> <laughs> that is so funny. Well, it was a, it was such an amazing contrast. I know exactly yeah, what you're Joe, talking about. We, uh, we're planning to get rid. Of her. What'd you say, Louise? Yeah, <laughs> but but he came on the show. It really came up when they're planning to get rid of Ray, and um and they they brought Kelly in to play my my daughter. And this kid shows up. I mean, she's a teenager. And she, but she, I mean, first of all, she's got one of those faces. The camera, there is an angle on that the camera does not love, right? And you know uh -huh. that, that just looking at her. Got this, she's one of these people that just walks into a room and everybody goes, whoa. And I... We played the first scene and we went, I went home and I said to my husband, we don't have to worry about a thing. As long as this kid wants to stay on the show, I've got a job. I mean, <laughs> she, she was just amazing. Oh no. Oh, no. Where'd she go? Hopefully, hopefully she'll, she'll do it again. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, you know, I was watching, I was trying to find scenes of the three of you and I think I, it was definitely you, Michael and Louise, but I think it was you, Kelly, outside the window. I don't know if that, that was definitely you because it, was a, it wasn't a clip from the show. It was like a clip package that somebody posted on YouTube, but I could see somebody, you know, like trying to get Michael's attention. I'll bet it. Oh, 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 oh my gosh. Okay, so we were in the living room and my mother comes home unexpectedly. Yeah, I'm not that's supposed probably. To why didn't you end up on the balcony? I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I lived there. Was, um, was I sleeping with her at the time? Yeah, we were sneaking around behind her back. And for some reason, I ended up on the balcony and froze to death. And they kept showing pictures. That's my first time using green screen. They kept showing me out there freezing and freezing and freezing. Finally, Michael gets rid of her and he comes and gets me. But I get really sick because I was out there for like so long. And you know what, Kelly, remind me. Okay, so the storyline was, did I start sleeping with Ray first? Yes. Okay, so I was having an affair with Louise and then with Ray Woodard. And then you and I started doing it on the side. Right. And we were keeping it. That's what it was. And then we kept it QT from her. And also, oh, I was married to yeah. a yeah. Yeah. Mr. John Gabriel. Yeah. And so um, we kept it from I, him too. That's right. I, you know, the, the, the thing about Ryan Soap for me that was, I literally started that. I, I was booked for three days. I didn't um, know this. Yeah. I just came on. I come on for three days. I'm going to let didn't... you two continue talking. I'm going to talk to Louise because I think she's having a little trouble connecting. Keep, okay. keep that, keep that okay. topic going. Okay. <laughs> So I was brought up for three days, and um, I remember I got a call after the first day of, of filming. By the end of the day, ABC called, or my agent called me and said, okay, AB, or whoever it was, the producers just saw today's whatever it was, and they put me on a contract. Nice. So that's how I came on just for you know those three days. And then they tried to bring on... Do you remember this Kelly? They tried to bring on a mom for me. I don't remember that. It was a famous, famous older actress. I, I, I don't know what the name Gloria Loring comes to mind, but that's the wrong oh, name. Oh, she was Loring. famous I think, on daytime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, she was a famous movie star. Oh, she was. And she came on, and she we had one day with scenes, and she couldn't remember her lines. I was so excited, like I'm going to get a mom, I'm going to get a family, mm. and she couldn't remember her lines, and they decided not to not to keep her. Well, well, it was, 
they, they were bringing on, like Elizabeth Taylor started it because she was a big fan of All My Children and mm -hmm. she wanted to be on, uh, on All My Children. And then everybody got into the act. Joan Fontaine came on to play my agent because she said, she said, well, Elizabeth did it. And, you know, she's, she's getting all this publicity and everything. And so she came, she came too. But, and I think a lot of the people yeah. were coming, but the tell the doing a daytime uh, TV, the soap opera is grueling. And if they're not used to learning, I mean, it's a matter it's of getting really used to it. The, me the, uh, mus the memories of muscle. And when you're doing it every day, no problem. But if you, if, they weren't doing it every day, and it's incredibly difficult. And, so, and to try to act on top of learning all those, you know, all those words and everything. I can understand, especially if they haven't acted for a few years. Mm -hmm. Was Ryan's Hope both of your first big TV thing? Yeah. Yes. Yes. So what did you first time on TV ever? I, I was. I think I was do. I was on broad Broadway doing a show, or I think. When, yeah, when you got Ryan, I think I was doing. Oh, I was doing. I had just closed in a show, a uh, huge Broadway success. It's a bomb uh, called Nefertiti, <laughs> starring Michael Nuri, me, uh, Andrea Macchiavici, Bobby Lapone, and I think I was doing oh that I didn't know this. when I got that first, the, my first day on Ryan's Hope. I think I'm pretty I didn't sure. Know that. Were you singing? But well, obviously, but oh my god! Yeah, it was a musical. So I had I had done a couple of I started doing some I started on Broadway so I started with a couple of Broadway shows and then got Ryan's Hope from there and then the rest is history <laughs> the rest is unbridled history <laughs> yeah it was you know we Alan the thing that Kelly and I can both I'm gonna talk let you to talk is that. Um, the show was going along and they had this amazing family called the Ryans. And at one point, ABC uh, took more control of the show and they said, well, we want to bring in some younger people. So um, they brought in Kelly and I as sort of the, the, you know, they used to call it the summer storyline, but they brought us in as the younger group. So we were sort of the ABC people. The last of the red hot lovers was an actual phrase they used. Oh, um, really? The last. I mean, something about being the last was like not that attractive to me. I didn't know why that was a big selling point. But yeah, we were the last of the red hot lovers at one point. That was one of the promos. Oh, my God. That was we, we had a lot of fun. I mean, there was some, you know, it was it was a lot for both it, of us. It was a lot. Yeah, I was only in New York for two weeks um, when I when I got Ryan's Hope. It was a total accident. I didn't know anything about anything. Just so I just it was a miracle. And um, um, so it's not like I was on Broadway or anything and then got Ryan's Hope. It's like <laughs> <laughs> ridiculous. I mean, huh? Yeah. So um, I'm sorry. I talked over you. What? What's going on? I think Alan's sound is out. He's muted himself. My microphone he's is trying not to, working. He's trying to help you always get back online. We can hear you. Okay, good. Uh, what, do you, what do you think Ryan Hope taught you? Well, for me, everything. Everything. First of all, Louise took me under her wing. I didn't know the first thing about anything. And if it wasn't for, I, I always tell people to this day, if it wasn't for Louise, like she could have, she could have uh, eaten me for breakfast. She was, you know, and instead she helped me learn stuff. Like, I don't know that, how do you cry on cue? How do you learn, you, you know? And we just hooked in and she helped me. Remember, she just was willing to, to see me and work with me. And um, I've never forgotten to this day. Sometimes if I have to do a, a certain scene, I will hear her voice in my head. Oh, wow. To this day. Yeah. Wow. And then for a while I was always like, I'm not doing this, Louise, you're doing this. And, and she'd be like, no. Um, and I even told the, I even told the producer that one time, it's not me, it's all Louise, which, you know, was probably not the, <laughs> the greatest thing for me to do, but I really yeah. felt like that, you know, I was so grateful. So um, everything. And then when I got out to California, um, the, the fact that we learned this massive amounts of script mm -hmm. and, and the camera and, you know, and we didn't get a second take. I mean, you could get fired for 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 um, stopping tape, 
because it was so expensive. The last, I mean, you could screw up a line, the set could fall back, fall down. No matter what, you had to keep talking. And so by the time I got out here and, and did independent movies, I was set. It was like, oh my gosh, I get another take. I was thrilled. I never got another take. Yeah, it was that was part of the hey Louise, you're back. Hey, yeah, I seem to be for the moment. I Oh, and it's a better connection too. Yes. And yeah, it's a better connection. We okay. were just talking we were just talking about how we were the show started out as the Ryans and then ABC kind of came in and and sort of threw in this story of the young people. So we were sort of you you got automatically put with the the ABC group of storylines right. uh, when you and I came in. Well, you know, right. uh, they had such success with Luke and Laura that they thought, let's do this. And mm -hmm. also they were attracting a younger audience. So for the summer, they were getting all the kids. And so they did that and, and they wanted to do it with their whole lineup, which is understandable. Yeah, but they did, a, they did a, a Luke and Laura for each yeah. yeah. We were the Luke and Laura Ryan's Hope. Mm -hmm. to, to, pull, to pull ratings for the, the younger people. But the people in Ryan's Hope, they, they were used to doing the, the Ryan family. And it was, they really, um, it was so weird to have ABC characters come in. You know, yeah. it, was, it was weird for them. So, yeah, I think Louise, you, were, well, you were there first, right? Me? Yeah. No, Louise was. Well, oh, Louise was there. Oh, yeah. I, I came on, um, I had worked with Claire on uh, Where the Heart Is, which mm -hmm. was another show. And she, I was out in LA and I was doing a, a thing for Norman Lear and I wanted to come back home. And she, uh, she wrote Ray for, you know, kind of classic Louise Schaefer Rich Bitch. But no. I, I don't think she ever expected. I think I think it was always well. Like I said, I was I was slated to be written out. Um, they wanted they 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 gave me a couple of year arc, but that was it. And then the network the network wanted to go for some glam and glitz. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was the romance. But it was also people with money and not kind of working class story that they were doing with Ryan. So that was being covered. They wanted to do that other glam and gliss thing. And I don't know. Do you think those do you guys think that ever actually worked? Totally? Do you well, think that you know, worked? I think it? I, I, I wonder mean, if the audience felt it did. I don't know. I thought the storyline was the pretty kind of ethos that was already there. Are you talking about your triangle? The our story, yeah. I yeah, think, the, yeah. Honestly, I think yeah, because uh, they were promoting the heck out of our story. The said the. Oh, right. Um, yeah, I mean, we got uh, when we when we started doing our whole thing, we but that was a lot of promo. Well, one of our fans, Scott, asked if you guys were disappointed well, got, when the riders you guys, you killed. Got... Ooh, so... <laughs> <laughs> I think Louise is on a little delay. This is a, she's never done this before. But you're doing great. Yeah. She's doing you great. Are. Um, well, okay, so in answer to the question, she did this were, for we, us. were we disappointed? Uh, yeah. Well, certainly I was. I was um, devastated. Because I was the first to go. Yeah. Um, so, it, yeah. yeah. It, it, in, a, in, a, in a hard way, definitely. I went, in a, I went in a rough way. Uh, yeah, these two women <laughs> shot me, killed me, and then they didn't take responsibility for it, which is terrible, and they got away with it. So... Uh, <laughs> Well, it was the Lana, as Louise said, it was the Lana Turner story, which I didn't know at the time, but a real story is Lana Turner had a daughter and she got involved with, um, I used to know his name, Johnny uh, something. And he was kind of like a, a Michael um, Pavel, a, a kind of like a mobster kid. And the daughter was a nightmare. And they 
they couldn't ever figure out yeah, who had him. And so it was a, based on a true story. Um, wow. But it was me. It was, Michael, she was covering for me. We were covering for each other. I didn't know I did it, but she was covering for me. Kelly was talking how Louise was, you know, helped her when she got there. Was there somebody who helped you? <laughs> um. <laughs> okay. You know, it was, we I mean, obviously, I getting to work with Louise was amazing because her professionalism is was astounding. Most of my stuff was at first just with Louise. I, here's one little one little nugget that I'll share. That's was it was a little challenging at first, to be honest, when, when we got on because we were the kids and we were the ABC people and the Ryans, um, the Ryans were not necessarily thrilled that there was a big new storyline coming in. Um, and the one thing that was sort of interesting is they wrote my character, to, I would come into Ryan's bar and um, and um, Helen Gallagher, who is, you know, the grand dame, um, <laughs> used to tell them, um, please rewrite the scene so that my character doesn't speak to his character because my character would never speak to his character. So they would then have to rewrite the scene that morning and have all the lines for Helen's character going to deal with was Randall Edwards at the time, who was lovely. She's so lovely. it was it was a time it was an interesting time. Interesting. Okay. Interesting. Oh, I, I wasn't sure if yeah, I, I, mean, <laughs> I, I think well, first of all, as we First of all, as yep. we all know, the show had not owned by Claren Hall, and they sold it to me. So there were the normal readjustments of the power. I'm all going to be truly honest about it. There was a lot of tension over the direction of the show, as there always is when ownership in anything or the power structure changes. And... Um, ABC did want young love storylines. And they also wanted, as I said, they wanted some glitzy people that they could dress up in pretty clothes. And what happened was Kelly and Michael were incredibly charismatic and they had wonderful chemistry together. And they were lovely with each other. I mean, in spite of all the negativity, they just were a lovely couple. And the audience responded. And um, then, then it took off. And I think there was always a great deal of tension about this new element coming in and how much of it. Boy, am I trying to be polite here. Um, there is tension. No. Um, I yeah. There was, yeah, there was a lot of they were yeah. you, you, you know, at this stage of the game, and not that I'm asking you to speak out of school. I mean, you know, a lot of people are have passed on, and and for the most part, you know, the show isn't on the air. You know, if it was on the air and you were trying to be polite, I get you know, and and you don't want to insult anyone either. But no, you know, there's there's tension. Good. Yeah, there's tension when there's when there's new actors who show up on a show and they're given front, you know, the fans yeah, watching us today, they get it. They, you know, they understand, they, they complain when there's new actors and then they fall in love with the new actors. And then, you, you know, it, it's like the cycle of daytime dramas, really, you know, you, a, a good show can weave all of that together. Mm -hmm. You know, the Helen Gallagher with, Michael and you know and Kim Kimberly and, and, and sorry Louise. <laughs> oh, I and, and I think there's real um I think it's legit. What? Am I out? What was Guys, legit? I am sorry about this. I don't know what to do. Um, <laughs> can you hear me? I'm, yeah. I'm not sure what's 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 going on. I would I would like to help, but I, I'm not I sure what. 
happening? I think the, I think it's the, just her her internet the struggle was a legit one. Um, it, Oh, I can't hear. I couldn't. I couldn't. Yeah, track my it. internet is yeah. giving us a hard time. Would you guys like me to bow out? Am I making things more? No. Oh no. no. Stay. No. We'll, we'll we'll make it work. Alan. <laughs> don't bow out. No, please don't leave. No, stay, stay, stay. Okay. okay so finishing I... finishing that topic. Then yes, it was it was an interesting time, and I, I, you know, know for me from, coming in, it was my it was my first big TV show, so I didn't know any better, and I just thought you come in and you do your thing, and some people will get along, and some people don't, and 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 that's okay, and and the funny thing was Helen Gallagher was like a, a freaking idol because she's this massive Broadway star, and I was so disappointed because I so wanted to do scenes with her because she. I had seen, she was in the first musical I had ever seen in my life. Man. I saw her in um, uh, No No Nanette. <laughs> I, like, right. I had seen her in that and I was like, oh my God, I'm gonna work with Helen Gallagher. And then and then it didn't work out that I could do scenes with her. But um, yeah, it was, it, it was- I love that you knew, you knew her before you got there. I didn't, I didn't know, I knew who she no, was. No, no, but, but yeah, yeah, right, who right. she was. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. You know, you were talking earlier and I, I wanted to say about learning lines. Mm -hmm. um, one of our fans, Floyd, sent me two Edge of Night clips of Louise that I, if you, I will forward them to the both of you. She's on trial with I a know dual this. I know this. Uh, I mean, absolutely. Fabulous. fabulous. Like, the amount of dialogue, yeah, she was she was basically the twenty two minutes of those two episodes mm -hmm. on on the stand being grilled in you know with the different person. It, it it's something. Wonderful. It's really great. Yeah. If you haven't Louise, seen, do you, do you remember those scenes? Oh, I think Louise she said yes. <laughs> I, know, I know she remembers them. Yeah. Yeah. It's spectacular. Because when um, I first saw it, I, I talked to her immediately. I said, I can't believe what I just saw. You were incredible. I was yeah, they, they and really I are. Away, and I was still blown away. Michael, I'll, I'll send you the links. I mean, it really is something yeah, to see. watch. Louise, yeah, it's a, it's a phenomenal performance. You um, know, Ellie, I have a, yeah. you know when I, per clips, I have been cleaning out my garage um, up at my house, and I have found boxes and boxes and boxes of Ryan's Hope tapes. Wow! You're so if there is Was anybody this, out there, on that, that, like it's on um, three VHS? quarter. Oh, no, uh, I think three quarter. Like wow. like the studio. I mean, I have. Yeah, yeah. I must have. I I don't know hours and hours and hours and hours of 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 clips and or, I mean, you know, episodes. Fans so would love there. them. Yeah. Fans, you, I, you know, I don't know how you transfer three quarter to YouTube, really. Somebody will figure it out. Somebody's somebody already figured figure it out, out there. If anybody's watching, let me know. Uh, Cause there's summer's half inch, summer's three quarter. I might've even put a bunch of it on DVD way back. Wow. You, that's amazing. I there's, mean, there's a Ryan Soap fan club. On, on Facebook mm -hmm. and they collect all that stuff. And they always talk about the shows that they're missing that aren't on YouTube. Oh, okay. So, Maybe I'll, oh I'll, yeah, it's a, it's amazing. It, it really is. And uh, Rob Michael says, greetings from your childhood home in Collingswood. He's in. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, so we, I grew up in this house anyway. So we put it up for when my when my father passed and my mom was going to move to another like assisted living. We put the house up for sale, and I think it was Rob that bought either the house directly from me or from someone else. But he's living. Oh, is he real? He's. My house. I thought he meant. I thought he just meant from your hometown. No, he's in my house. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's great! I had no idea. Sorry. I told him never look in the attic. <laughs> under the the um, 
<laughs> all the stuffing up there. <laughs> wow, I didn't really put that that together. Kelly, you had you mentioned your husband on the show. What was it like working with John Gabriel? Well, he'd been there a long time. He was um you know, he was one of the old guards sort of except for he was not a Ryan either. Um it was, I think. Those Ryans. Well, I think that um, that they felt, and I don't. I understand this. I don't blame them. That to have me running around, pulling the wool over everybody's eyes was was it was um, it did it it wasn't respectful of their character, and they had to figure out a way to do that where they didn't feel like a fool. Um, you know, I mean, so they were always trying to justify. First, they they thought for a wild second about me um, seducing Frank Ryan, but they, I get, they didn't do that. But John got stuck with the Lolita story, and mm. he was a trooper. He was a trooper. So <laughs> he was very nice to me. I don't. I, he doesn't have a mean bone in his body. He doesn't have like a. Um, I wouldn't say I wouldn't say he was um, jealous or egotistical. At, I mean, he's just all. He knows who he is. He enjoys himself. He loves being John Gabriel. And I don't think he has those kind of feelings, you know, about, oh, maybe somebody's taking my screen time or anything like that. And um, um, what else was I going to tell you about him? It was, imp oh, and plus, you know, I forget how old he was, but he was a good deal older than I. And you could just sit there sometimes. Somebody said one time, I, we were on a break, we were being held for some reason. And somebody said, it might have been Louise, said, well, we could always just sit here and watch John Gabriel get better looking. <laughs> he just like, the guy was so good looking. And, you know, I mean, he knew he was handsome and everything, but it, it wasn't like, he didn't, he wasn't, he wasn't like stuck up about it or anything like that. He just I loved did, being him, you know? I did, I did a show with him and his wife not long ago. Oh. And, and they are adorable together. They, yeah. I mean, he, for a very long time, a very long time. And and he's up there, you know, and rightfully so. His memory's not all there, but she they're, they're just like a comedy. It's like uh, Gracie and Burns or whatever they were. They just they are always adorable. were. Yeah. They, oh, were they? Yeah, mm -hmm. they really adorable. I they they were so fun to fun to watch for both of you, Michael. I'm sure you talked about this before with me. But who or what influenced you both on becoming actors? Um, Kelly, you want to go? Or Michael, well, go first. Well, I, for me, it was, you know, uh, it's funny. I, went, I wasn't going to be an actor. I was at University of Pennsylvania. And I was always liked musicals and all that. And I was going there to study architecture. And I was doing a show um, back, back, you know, backstage afterwards at the, at the uh, Hal Prince Theater. And um, with, in fact, a very good friend of mine from, who's still a good friend who you may know, who is David Zippel, who has now become a massive Broadway. Yeah, the name's um, another familiar. Broadway. He was also in that, in that period. Um, I was doing a show, Kiss Me Kate, and I was backstage. And afterwards, this little man comes up and he says, you know, you ought to think about going into theater. And I said, okay, terrific. Thank you. And I said to someone, who was I? I said, it was Hal Prince. It was his ah! theater. That's the Hal Prince theater. He happened to be there seeing that show. And so I literally transferred out of there um, and I went to the Boston Conservatory in the next quarter. And that that would probably be my biggest influence. Wow. Sure. Hal, Hal Prince isn't a bad one for that. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah, he, he's basically produced everything. everything. Everything, yeah. And had his own theater. <laughs> And, and Kelly, for you? Oh, I remember watching old, my mother loved to watch like, like the equivalent of what we have, we'd have Turner movie classics. But when I was growing up, they played all those old movies at, at night. And so I would stay up with her as long as I could and watch the movies. I loved the movies because they were glamorous. And also in the Midwest, you don't show your feelings. We have that, Dan, that uh, sunflower syndrome. Don't say you want to be an actress. Don't show how you really feel. It's very kind of, um, repressed. And these people were like, you know, you, they were like having tantrums and weeping and there was, and they were saying what they felt and they looked fabulous. And my mother, the look on her face is like, cause she was so inherently 
glamorous and, and one of them, but she didn't have that kind of a life. And I thought the, and the connection to me was watching her face light up. It was the, they were doing it. And I wanted to do that for my mom. Oh, that's amazing. I love and that. I, and I always kept his, I want to do that for other people is make their, make their face go like that. And so um, that was me. Yeah. But I, 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 I love that. That might be my favorite answer to that, oh. to that, to that question, especially like watch, you know, the fact that you noticed at a young age, the reaction that those mm -hmm. pictures were having on your mom, that that's cool. That's. Yeah. Yeah. But we, um, and she didn't treat me like a little kid, you know. I mean, she she let me watch the birds on television. I said, "What did you watch them for?" Oh my god, <laughs> Scar scarred for life. Yeah, but we we really enjoyed that so much, and um, um, that was that was it. And then also too, she used to say, "You do what you want to do because um, you'll just you'll just be sorry if you don't." And I had the, it was very strange because most people expect to hear, oh, my parents didn't want me to do, but my father had already passed away and my mother said, go. In fact, one time early on the show, I was so homesick and I was so scared and there was a payphone. and that's how long ago this was. And I called her up and I said, I want to come home. <laughs> you know, big <laughs> ugly cries, right? And she said, you stick it out. <laughs> <laughs> she really wanted that from me, you know, and, and in retrospect, she put, I left, kind of left her all by herself. So it was very unselfish of her to, to want me to, to have that, you know, it's, it was, it was lovely, but you know, in, in case I didn't make it clear, John was, John Gabriel was super supportive. I mean, he saw that I was just this kid, you know, and he, he helped me. I mean, not like Louise because, we played mother and daughter and mother all that kind of thing. But he was very, yeah, he, he was very supportive and um, um, I don't want to say protective because I don't think he realized there was, why would, why would he need to be protective? But he was, um, um, he had an awesome attitude about it, and, you know, and he didn't, um, um, I, I mean, he think, I think he was having fun with me, you know, so it, it worked out okay. I could have gotten somebody that was like, my character, you know, but he didn't do that. So, you know, I just wanted to make sure that I, I made that clear. Okay, good. Louise, if you can hear me. What'd you uh, say? Frozen. Yes. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> Who I or what? You. Good. Who or what influenced you on becoming an actress? No. Wow. Um, I, my family went to theater. We lived in Haven, and New Haven was theater town for Broadway. So we went to theater a lot. And I just, I, I was never a big fan of reality. And I really liked play pretend. And mm. I didn't really, I liked other people. I, I like not being me, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, I think uh, I think a lot of actors become. Yeah, I I really I really liked the pretend, the pretend quality. Of, I I I and I loved spelling. I came from a family that sat around the table. My Italian family sat around the table and told stories. And, mm -hmm. and I loved that. I I associated that with happiness and 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 um, affection. And but but mostly I I just I was an only child. I I for a long time mm. I have brothers and brother and sisters now, but I years and um, we lived in a community where there was no public transportation and mom would drive for a while. So I was on my own a lot and I just liked pretending to be other people. That, hmm. was, that was really, really it. And is, is and, that... Oh, and, yeah? 
when I was 15, my dad. And um, I was preparing monologues for a state competition. And they gave me the last speech from Emily in our town, you know, where huh. she says goodbye. And, you know, my dad had just died and it brought up floods and I won. Wow. Um, and my acting coach, who was an old school, very kind of Edwardian lady, said, you see how lucky you are? are nothing bad can ever happen to you because you sit so mm -hmm. that also i loved that about acting that, that and and what made nothing, you make the transition nothing got wasted you could always you never had happened to you and how did you make the transition from actress to writer Did you? I got old. And um, <laughs> they stopped offering me contract. You know, I was in my late. Yeah, I got old. And it was sort of like, what the, I mean, what the hell? Do you want me to do about that, you idiots? I fix it. <laughs> but I, you know, all of a sudden, I, I was too old for these parts. And there was uh, one part that I went up for, and the guy was like five years younger than me, and, and I was too old to play his mother. And I was like, are you out of your... <laughs> I have a very bad problem with my vocabulary. <laughs> are you That's out of okay. your mind? Um, and I... And, and what they, they said was, well, on her be a romantic, and you're no longer sexually vulnerable. Wow. So wow. I got pissed off, which I do, and said, I'm not I'm bad, bad victim. So uh, I'm going to learn to do something else. And I, I started writing for the soaps which was a good transition, uh, except I hated it because <laughs> I wanted to tell my own stories. And then when I was 60, I published my first novel. And bravo, bravo. I really that is... love this job. Mm -hmm. I really do. And you've me, published seven, problem, right? Well, for me, the thing about acting that I never liked goes to the few that I'm not allowed to talk about. Um, but yeah, yeah, I've published seven. Good for I, you. Uh, with, with Random House. And I, um, I, I love that you're, I you know, we can hear you say that. Because um, it is telling my own stories. And I really like that. And also for me, I never liked the... What? I I never liked the cosmetics of acting, you know, and and by the way, I believe it's fair. If you're going to ask people to watch you, you should be somebody they want to look at. But I found there was so much time and energy that I had to spend in order to look the way I was supposed to that I just didn't want to spend my time that way. Hmm. If that hmm. makes any sense. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I can tell a story on Louise, which is when we were sitting there on, on Ryan's Hope and, you know, back in the early 80s. I don't know what's happening. Already telling me Anybody about these me? stories that, that she yes, was we... there was Say, say it again, Kelly. She was already telling me about these stories that she was going to write. She all and I got. Oh she, wow! Oh yeah. So yeah, I was the first, one of the first to know. <laughs> <laughs> you were in the know. Oh, I love that. Hey, Michael. Um, 
a fan says that I saw Michael at the theater by the sea <gasps> in Man Manton. Where is it? Man Manton. No, uh, Man Man. Mantanuck, Mantanuck, yeah. My, my he talk. said when you, not my talk. No. I don't think it's yeah. no, it's no. Man, about to see a man, man, something I can't remember. Mantanuck, like almost like Nantucket, or maybe he means Nantucket. Manton but when you were going to the Boston Conservatory, yes, uh, that was my first. Uh, you know, most people when they go for college, they they get some jobs and they you know they work as a cashier. I. Uh, no, it was my, it was between, I guess it was my first year in school and I did summer stock for summer. We did 12 musicals in Oof. what, 12 weeks or yeah, maybe 12 weeks for over three months. We did 12 musicals. We would do a two, like a two week run on every musical. And then we, during the day, we'd have to learn another one. That was amazing training because I had to learn 12 leads and 12 musicals in a matter of wow. three months. I still to this day have moments where I remember doing <laughs> Cornelius Tackle in Hello Dolly and um, uh, 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 what's his name in uh, Anything Goes. Um, you're the top, you're the top. I remember, oh my God, I remember all those shows I did. But it was great training. It was great training. It really helped me learn how to learn, memorize scripts for later. Do you still sing? I mean, I'm sure you still sing, but do you actively? I do, I do. I, um, you know, went on and did a lot of musicals. I sang on Young and the Restless for many oh, wow. years, my character. And then uh, I just did a revival before, you know, the, the, the world ended. I just did the uh, big Broadway revival of Catch Me If You Can. Um, and then uh, I just, right before we closed, I had a call back for a Broadway musical and then theater shut down the next day. So uh, I'm, I'm hoping to do another Broadway show. Oh, that's that's awesome. That's awesome. Um, can you talk about your three, Ryan's Hope, Search for Tomorrow, and Young and the Restless? How would you compare the characters you played? Same character. <laughs> <laughs> I, every show, I Time always cast. Mother and daughter, I was sleeping with the mother and daughter. So I had Kelly and Kelly and, and Louise on Ryan's Hope. And then they brought me on to search for Mar and I slept with the two sisters. And ah. then I um, I took it up a, a notch on Young and the Restless and married both the mother and the daughter at the same time. At the same time? Oh. At the same time. I would disguise myself <laughs> with, a, with a southern accent and I would mar and I married her mother. How did I <laughs> That is fantastic. I'm getting on Kelly. YouTube right after we hang out. Oh, that's some, that's some frightening, I, frightening. I am scene. too. Who who were they on Young and the Restless? Was it Jess? Uh, I started out with Jess. I was her uh, Jess Walton, who plays Jill. Uh, I was her male secretary. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait yeah. that <laughs> Air quotes. Um, Kind of like I was with Louise. I started out as her secretary. And then, you know, where that yeah, goes. Yeah, her assistant, right. Yeah, you were yeah. her assistant, yeah. Wink, wink. And then, yeah. uh, uh, and then I went in to have a storyline with um, uh, Trisha Cast. So I started seducing her, but then I met, and then Trisha's mother came on the scene and I thought I better marry her because when I kill Trisha, I'm gonna, I've gotta get rid of the mother, so I better be married to her. And then, <laughs> it's a crazy story. Crazy That's story. amazing. Kelly, Matthew is asking about Fast Times at Ridgemont High mm -hmm. and about it's one of his favorites and oh, your yeah. and your cheer. Did you come up with that yourself or was it, you know, was it improvised? The, the cheer in, in the football with the yeah. glove? Yeah. Um, it was to the stripper. I don't know if they left the stripper in, but they were da, 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 da. Um, I think I made that up. <laughs> I think I did that. What What is it like being a part of something because like Fast I think Times? I remember that people were kind of taken aback at first when I did it. And they were like, let's do it. Let's go with it. Because I I don't know. You know, I'm always inappropriate when I hear <laughs> things like this. Um, what did you, I'm sorry, you asked me something? No, sorry, but you, you're, you you know, Fast Times at Ridgemont High, Night of the Comet, Chop, these mm -hmm. cult really classics. What's it like being a part of, you know, 
things that are always, you know, people are always talking about them. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable to, to think that if you were to tell me, you know, in the 80s and the 90s that you're going to be talking about this like literally every day in, you know, 2021, you're going to be talking about the soap, you're going to be talking about these movies. I wouldn't have believed it. You know, I was just going on, you know, like trying to earn a living as an actress. That was my, my big plan. And um, I was thinking earlier today, because I knew we were going to be talking, I thought, I, you know, if I'd had any idea, I'd be talking about this job for the rest of my life. <laughs> um, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't, you just, how can you, how can you know something like that? I'm so, um, so flattered and, and not more than flattered. I'm really grateful is not a great word, but to, to know that people like that, the whole thing about being an actor is you want to go out there and make a connection. And when you've made one and people tell you that, that they, it, you know, that it matters to them and it was important to them and they loved it, that's, then you've fulfilled your life purpose. So how could I not like be thrilled, you know? You know, it's well, Ellen, the, the thing about also for, I know for both Kelly and I, because it was really our first big TV jobs, yeah. um, I can honestly say Ryan's Hope changed the direction of my life. Yeah, me too. For, for sure. Too. I mean, I, I'm very grateful for that. And very mm -hmm. grateful to you know Claire and all those people for giving me the opportunity because it it set me on a course. Because mm -hmm. once we had that and and the success of that show really uh, paved the way for everything else to follow. So that was a that was an amazing thing. Have well, both did. of you met Claire Labine? Oh yeah, yeah. I worked well, with her. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we would all do. Uh, I think there were times when. I look at Christmas parties, or I can't remember, but yeah, I, I, I can picture her right now. Yeah, I can too. Earth shoes. Yeah. Wow, well, that's crazy. It did give us our, our careers because, I mean, I learned all the technical stuff, and Louise taught me all the, all the you know, the, the acting thing. I, I feel like that was a master course in acting. And then because I was already working, I didn't have to go through a lot of the same things that actresses have to go through mm -hmm. because yeah, I was already, I was in that room because they wanted to hire me, not because of anything else, you know? You and I, didn't, I, I bypassed a lot of that stuff. So I'm extremely grateful. <laughs> well, and you know what's so interesting though? You, we're talking about those movies you, you've done. It, it's amazing to me because Ryan's Hope is not really available on the air. You know, yeah. it's on you. It's on YouTube here and there. There's a couple clips, but the fans remember without mm -hmm. even you know, and even a lot of your shows are probably before DVR, right? I mean, no, they around, were, DVR. were we, we, uh, not DVR. But no, there was no DVR. VCR, not DVR. VCR. Yeah, they could record them. They could. Yeah, they could. Because they I'll let you know, I'm going to look in the garage. I'll let you know what they're on. Yeah, yeah, if they're on if they're on three quarter or, or VCR, that's I crazy. Was, I was shocked to know that so many when I got to California, so many famous people that were blowing me away knew who I was. I, I went because to a party at Elizabeth McGovern. She's bewitched, you know. I grew up with that. <laughs> you got good. Maybe, maybe she didn't think I was good when I first started. But you got, and they they would know who I was, and I was like, I, I couldn't get over it. Because the soaps were very and, different, and they would, re yeah, they would, they would record it, and then they'd sit in bed at night and watch us. And you I was like, there, there, there were three networks. Yeah. What? There were three networks when you were on. Yeah, you so, know. yeah, a lot less choices of stuff. So if yeah. you're doing all these reunions, Alan, so I'm sure you're finding this that the soaps were a whole different animal back in the day in the '80s. Yeah. The soaps were like the thing. Um, it, it they paid for. Now. They paid for prime time. Yes, yeah. they did. They paid for prime time. Louise, what do you remember about Edge of Night? Because your role was spectacular. <laughs> did you hear me? Oh, Louise. <laughs> oh, darn. Yes. I beg you. Uh, I was asking what you remembered about Edge of Night. I can see. 
Edge of Night. What do you remember about Edge of Night? That live. Oh, you did it live. Wow. Wow. But, you know, we did it live. It was live in um, the 70s, which I loved. Live TV. And I was playing the two different characters. So, you know, I've been across the studio with the hair lady pulling the wig off and putting the other wig on and g literally getting into the um, wow. I loved that show. Um, and I loved it mostly because of two women, Annie Flood and Lois. They were... You know, sometimes somebody on a set will set the tone for the whole set. And those two women were so great. Annie would come and tell you if she liked something you'd done, huh. you'd go tell her because she was so good. I really enjoyed that, but I, I loved playing Josie Serena. I, I did. But I also learned something out of that show because I did drive myself a little crazy. Um, <laughs> I I was so, so methody, you know, so involved in being a method actress. And I had looked up split personality, done all the research. And I got a little cookie, I got a little squirrely for a while. And uh, they had me on tranquilizers. <laughs> so oh, oh, wow. um, I learned after that show can't take it home with you you have yeah. about how to leave it in the studio that, well i don't I know if you heard us show. well i don't know if you heard us but earlier i wanted to say something about the the men that try again i can't can't hear again. What did you want to say? Oh. Uh, okay, I can hear you now. Okay, tell us what you wanted to say. <laughs> Louise, what were you going to say? Oh, I'm so sorry, everybody. Oh. It, it's the power of the internet. Some days it's good, and some days it is not. You got to you have to do another show with just Louise. She's got stories you can't believe. Oh yeah, I I, I, I am I am sure. Do an hour with her by herself and just let her go. It's. <laughs> Don't. I'm Louise, try again. About. I, I wanted to say something about the men that acted in in our day. You know, that was a time of most of the big stars were guys that, like I said, five words, and then you cut to a car chase, and the sun comes out, and they go to their trailer. And guys did it with dialogue because it was a verbal medium. And they were smart. I mean, Michael, obviously, perfect example. Smart actors. They were really intelligent, smart actors. Mm -hmm. And I, I hope that they get full recognition for that today. Mm -hmm. They didn't in our day. Mm -hmm. they did really for day. kind of a bad stepchild. But. Hmm. I've thought about a lot of years. Our, what our male actors managed to pull off in a time when that's not what made a star for a for a guy. Hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. Interesting. Alan, okay. I've got I I have one quick story that I could share that one of my favorite memories of Ryan's Hope. Yeah, please do. When I was written out, 
Um, my character was very much a clothes horse and he, you know, because Ray was buying me all this amazing, I had, I had suits and I had the most amazing wardrobe. So um, the costumer- your, your boss was buying you nice clothes. Oh, <laughs> buying me a lot of clothing. Yeah. So she wanted to dress me up and show me off. And uh, when, I, when I left the show, the costumer came to me and she said, listen, on your last day, come to me and see me. So I did. She had packed up all of my wardrobe. I had to do two trips of taxi cabs filled to the wow. brim. I mean, I was carrying stuff out like, like this. I, those, I wore those clothes for the next 10 years. I had suits, tuxedos. I had the most amazing wardrobe. <laughs> I literally had to wear until it all went out of style. But they, they, and she said, don't tell anybody. So now I'm telling everybody. <laughs> yeah. I didn't, get, a, I didn't get two truckloads, but I, I got some too. She didn't say that. Lot, yeah. The it wardrobe, I don't remember who that wardrobe person was. Her name was, was Maria. And she'd go, every, her solution to everything in life was double face tape. <laughs> God bless, God bless that. Cause I, oh my God, I had so much clothing. I, I, I had to put stuff in storage. It was and amazing. Then I got to California and they told me I was overdressed all the time. <laughs> Ke Kelly, where were you from originally? Minneapolis. So what was it like <laughs> living in New York City at such a young age? I loved it. Well, it, I had a great, I had a job, you know, and, and I was making, you know, enough to live on in New York City. And it was, <laughs> oh. I said that I miss, I had, I have so many vivid memories of living on the Upper West Side and walking um, to the studio and Louise and I would walk home and I would get a slice and she, she liked those, what are those cookies called? Um, Black and white cookies? No, uh, it's got a, a little jelly in the middle. Uh, a Linzer tart, I think. No, something different. The cookie with the powdered like the sugar. Ras and raspberry. Yeah, I, thought, I think that's a Linzer tart, isn't it? Or something? I but think the, we'll call it something else. And it was just, uh, I miss, I mean, I, I I just really miss New York City. I just still fall asleep. Do you, know, do you remember where your apartments were? Oh, you yes. Remember, Michael? So, yeah, I, uh, 240 West End Avenue, apartment 6C. Oh, let's go wow. there. <laughs> Somebody's oh, going, let's go there. Yeah. <laughs> I, had, I kept that apartment for many, many years until they found out that I had moved to California and then they evicted me. Is so, um, <laughs> were you renting it? Yeah, it was a rental. Oh, and they, <laughs> and they're like, oh, yeah, records. yeah that, oh, they're yeah. like, we can, we can triple that price if we kick him out. Oh, I was paying like $560 a month and it was a doorman building, beautiful oh, elevator. I was gorgeous building. Wow. Yeah. Those were good times. And then we would walk right to the studio. Like Kelly said, where, we where was of, Ryan's hope at the time? When it you was did in the it. old Dark Studios, uh, Dark Shadows Studio on 55th between um, 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 8th and 9th? 8th and 9th no, and 10th. 9th and 10th. 52nd, on? 53rd. Between, 53rd yeah. between 9th and 10th. Yeah. Oh, wow. I think that's probably where like um, John Stewart or a talk show used to be. That was Dark yeah, Shadows. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, those were good times. I mean, especially, you know, for, I know for Kelly and I, it's, it's, it's really how we um, kind of came out of, you know, college or, or home or whatever, and boom, slammed right into that. It was, it was an amazing time of it our was life. Unbelievable good fortune. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. New York and New York in the eighties was pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I didn't keep my apartment. I want. I, I thought about it, but then I thought, and I was paying like almost five hundred dollars a month, and I thought, you know, rents cannot continue to get this high. And but I don't need to hang on to this one because there's just no way this is going to crash. They, you just can't charge this of money. And I let it go. And my neighbors were begging me because they were trying to do the building co-op. They please, please, please don't. You know, and I just said, it's too much expense. <laughs> If I, you know, it seemed reasonable at the time to think that it was just going to go down because it was so high, but I was wrong. Huh. Michael, last time we spoke, you were working on that Netflix uh, special, I think. Is that coming soon? 
Did I say, did I reveal that? You, you didn't say what it was. I, oh. I, I know what it is, but you didn't okay. say what it is. Okay, well, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm producing. So I don't know if you're allowed to say it now. I'm, I'm not. Okay, but, so but now you just did. So I well, no, say. I didn't because you, I didn't say what it is. <laughs> I'm, I'm, um, I'm executive producing a series on Netflix right now. Um, I'm doing a pilot for another network right now, and then I'm still um, senior supervising producer for Extras, Mansions, and Millionaires. So I'm still doing that, and I just got thank you know thank you for vaccines and all that. I just yesterday got my. Uh, I, I think it's called availability or something like approval to be back in workforce from Warner Brothers for extra to travel again to shoot. Because wow. you've had both, right? I, I had, both. had both. I got an, and, I got an overflow. And Louise had both. Oh, and great. Kelly's had one. I right? just had the first one today. I had to get a documentation because I wasn't technically... Um, I'm not eligible to go yet, but I work with an older person, and so um, yep, they finally they finally let me have it. So I got my first one just an hour before I showed up here. <laughs> so if I have anything does, going does on, your arm gonna... hurt? does no. your arm hurt? Yeah, um, the second one was very for me. Oh. Oof, the the arm was <laughs> that was a that yeah. was a painful pain painful. But hey, we're 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 getting on the other side. Where Michael? Do you know where the first place you want to travel is? I do. Uh, I'm doing. I'm going to be shooting the montage in Cabo, that resort. That's the first one I'm shooting. I'm shooting on like the 21st of April. So I'm bam. I'm back out on the road, and then we're doing Maldives this season. We're doing uh, a bunch of Hawaii stuff. Nothing in Europe though this season. Yeah. Ma the Maldives. I've seen people who have gone there. That looks fabulous. Yeah. I don't know if that. Fabulous. Kelly, and you're producing, right? You're producing some movies. Yes, I, I'm going to do this thing called Staycation. And it's, guess what? You know, the, all those stories about the pandemic. Have, this is kind of like a, this, the stuff that's already shot is serious. But um, I think that there's going to be some some humor in it, too. So I'll, I'll be in it. But, um, um, you know, we all have that thing of we have to all wear different, all, all sorts of hats now. You can't just be like one thing where, you, you know, when, when you first start out, it's, you, you can be just one thing if you want, but uh, we kind of have to take the bull by the horns these days. You have to make it happen. And Louise mm -hmm. is currently writing a new book, right, Louise? Yes. Uh, Louise, yes. yes. Louise, we're going to have to get Louise's internet yeah. fixed so we can, so yeah. we can have her again. Uh, <laughs> I, I finished the first draft of it. And um, I, yeah, I feel bad, guys, because I kind of I, I talk the interactions, but it's oh, uh, can't can't hear it. No. Uh, you know, we'll we'll try and do it again, Louise. Yeah, we'll try and do this again. Thank you all so much for doing this oh, and spending oh, well, some time. My pleasure. Okay. Thanks for having us. It's great seeing you guys. So you really, you, Alan, you got to remember this is also really nice for us too. Oh, it's the best. Yeah. Good. It's it's just. Thank it's, you, Alan. Yeah. You're very welcome, Louise. Hi, darling. Yeah, it's lovely meeting you. I heard such nice things about you. Everybody said, oh, I love him. <laughs> oh, thanks. Everybody loves the house. Those are the uh -huh. comments I got when I posted, yeah. And it's just lovely to see. And, and we have a lot of people watching today yeah. from Italy, too. People are watching from Italy. I mean, you know, oh, the power oh, of yeah. power of Ryan's hope, you know? Yeah. I mean, crazy. So thank you all. Stay well. Thank you. You too. Thank okay. you. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye, Louise. Bye, Kelly. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Remember, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, you can do so down below. Turn on the notifications to be reminded of all upcoming shows. And have a great day, everybody. See you tomorrow. <laughs>